Buongiorno. Benvenuti in Sicilia. Right, I did about seven takes of that intro in Italian and my pronunciation gets worse with every single take. So we're just gonna leave it there. And um, yeah, welcome to Sicily. It's my first time here and I'm so excited to show you around. We just got to the local marina. We are staying near Syracuse. So it's a lovely historic part of the island. Um, and today we're gonna, yeah, cruise around it. We need to go in that boat first, which is gonna take us to that boat over there. Look at this. As a first introduction to Sicily, the boat tour organized by CV Villas, who we were staying with, was perfect. Not only did we get to admire the island from a new perspective, we also got pretty well acquainted with some of Sicily's best dishes. There was some local white wine, sun-dried tomatoes, black olives, and cow's cheese. My personal favorite, the caponata. It's so good, I know. Aubergine parmigiana and gambero rosso red prawns. If you'd like to learn more about Sicilian cuisine, you can check out this post on my Instagram where I talk about five of the best local dishes. Hello, hello. Just got back from the boat, which can only mean one thing. It means I'm absolutely exhausted. <laughs> no, obviously I don't mean that, but sometimes doing nothing, especially when you're in a hot country, can be quite tiring and um, in order to relax because that obviously is exactly what I need right now um, we're gonna go to a hammam which is actually inside of the villa so I'm gonna have some hot tea um, get in the steam room and just just chillax um, but before I do that I need to introduce you to someone this is my new best friend no where are you going it just said we're friends that's embarrassing traitor Never mind, my best friend hates me. All the more reason to go have a little sit down and um, think about my choices. All right, let's continue with the relaxation. I'm running myself a bubble bath. The entire purpose of this trip is to recharge a bit. It's been a really long two years. This is my first international trip. And look, I mean, woe is me. I didn't get to travel. A lot of people had a far worse two years than I have. Hot. Um, yeah, I don't want to complain too much, but when traveling and your work as uh, somebody who works in the travel industry becomes a part of your identity, then losing that is sad and um, it can take a toll on your self-confidence, your ego, and it is an odd experience. <laughs> this must be really hard to take me seriously wearing this mask. But, but I think I'm making some valid points. Let's have a look at this. I'll leave it on for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna get in the bath and I'm gonna watch the third season of Sex Education. I don't know if any of you have been watching, but I absolutely love it. It's such a good series. I had just washed my hair and now I've got to dry it. But before I do, let me tell you a little more about dinner. We are having it here at the villa, which is really exciting because the villa has a private chef. So whenever you rent one of these villas through CV Villas, they offer you a chef free of charge. You pay for the ingredients, they pay for the chef. Especially here in Sicily, that is a pretty good deal. The food here is amazing. I had some caponata on the boat today that I cannot stop thinking about, so hopefully dinner is gonna be just as good as lunch. You guys, I'm so relieved I dressed up because otherwise I would be dragging the evening down. Let me show you where we're having dinner tonight. Good morning. We are going on a little school trip today. We're going to <laughs> hello, cool kids in the back. <laughs> We're going to um, Syracuse. Ovidia had been listed as World Heritage by UNESCO in 2005. 
we need a good reason to list a site and the reason here was that since the first human settlement on the island which dates back to the Bronze Age, I mean 21st century BC to now, Ortigia was never ever abandoned. That's the temple of Apollo, oldest one in town, oldest one in the region, and oldest one in South Italy. Welcome to Syracuse. Before we get into the history of it, I wanted to give you a little <laughs> bit of a real life check. <laughs> that just at me. Um, anyway, that reality check I was talking about. When you look at people's lives online, and this is true of content creators, but it's also true of everyone, you see the glorified reality, right? Um, well, here is the actual reality. I got ill, I got, I got a cold about two days ago, and this entire trip, I pose for pictures, and then I have to blow my nose for about like 13 minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm just full of snot. I'm absolutely disgusting, but that is obviously not what you're gonna see online, is it? Um, so yeah, just um, <laughs> a little reality check about um, what, what travel really looks like. It's never, it's, well, very rarely is it glamorous, even on a luxury holiday like this one. This street is where I shot this picture. I think that means Road of the Crucifix because there's a church behind it. That's, yeah, but I could be wrong. Got on with that. Yeah. Tell me how clever I am. Yeah, you clever. <laughs> I finally stopped sniffling. It is a glorious oh, nice. feeling. And I think it's Syracuse healing me, to be honest. This place is absolutely gorgeous. This is Lauren, by the way. I probably introduced her already, but just in yeah. case. Um, <laughs> this is her handle. And um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. There's so much history. It's such a multicultural place. We just came from the Jewish Quarter, which used to have a substantial Jewish population back in the 15th century. Um, now, there are no more Jewish citizens there, but a lot of people from abroad come to admire the synagogue, the architecture. And I mean, for good reason, let me flip the camera. I know this is a stupid stereotype, but there is a huge, huge Sicilian wedding to my left and I do feel a tiny bit like I'm um, in The Godfather, which uh, was actually filmed in Sicily. Not exactly in the places that we're visiting, but n near enough, near enough. Look at this. It's so good. So now I'm inside the building in front of which the wedding was taking place and I'm going to show you the interior is absolutely gorgeous. There's this lovely stained glass up at the top and it's casting the most beautiful, colorful shadows. I'm going to flip it now. The cathedral has a long history. A temple stood on the site as early as the 5th century BC, the Temple of Athena, mentioned by both Plato and Cicero in their works. The cathedral was rebuilt after the 1693 Sicily earthquake, during which two-thirds of the entire population of nearby Catania were killed. It was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005. Yeah, this is it. I'm just repeating what I'm hearing. This is a dry Moscato wine and it is great. It looks like apple juice. That's my expert opinion. Oh my god. That's really good. That's I am not acting right now. This is fantastic. Hello, I have just done a full outfit change because I am what is commonly known as an absolute loser. So I am ready for more Insta pics, but sorry, that was really loud in the background, but hopefully you can hear me. Um, this behind me is the archeological part of Neapolis, which means new town, not to be confused with Naples, which is a town in Southern Italy as well. Um, and one interesting fact, less historic, more, more contemporary, is that Harrison Ford, it's real loud. Harrison Ford is going to be filming a movie here. The difference between the Greeks and the Romans, especially in the sculpture, when they represented the woman, she was perfect. She was 
very thin, a very well proportioned, tall, and very perfect. Each part of the body was perfect and very proportioned. The Romans, no, they, they never idealized the human beings. They represented the human being the way they were, really. Sometimes the lady were not really thin, not slim, sometimes a bit plump, because yeah. they were sensual, sexy. I'm gonna make a generalization now, but hear me out. I feel like every single Italian tour guide, this is quite specific, that I've ever come across is so incredible, so elegant, so poised. I am slightly in love with our current tour guide. And what she just explained to us is the history of this tree. So this tree, I mean, look at it. The, judging by its size, it dates back to when the Bourbons were here in Sicily. And what's really interesting is that Italy at that time was much smaller than it is today. It started somewhere around Naples and went all the way down south. The south was the prosperous bit. Nowadays, when you visit Italy, you quickly realize that that is no longer the case. All of the industry, all of the money-making activity is primarily concentrated in the north. And this is the reason why when there were all these first ships of Italians going over to the States, a lot of them were from Sicily and the south, which was progressively getting poorer and poorer. And we had a recommendation for a film from our tour guide. I always tell my guests that to see a movie, a legend of the 1900. That's a movie about the first ship going to New York. Because Syracuse is part of the ancient Roman Empire, it has a pretty wild and long history, and we got to see some part of it today. Number one is Archimedes' tomb. Archimedes wasn't actually buried in there, which was discovered fairly recently, but it's still an interesting historical site. And number two, we saw the spot where Prometheus apparently had, and this is a bit graphic, had his liver chomped out by an eagle. According to ancient lore, he is the one who gave fire to humans, and the other gods went into pleased with it because it made us a little too powerful and so they decided to punish him and the punishment as I mentioned earlier was chaining him to a rock which was here in Syracuse and um, I don't know why I'm smiling so much because it's very gruesome having an eagle eat his liver every single day and then have the liver grow back so he could be punished all over the next day. Good news the amphitheater is super cool bad news this again but look if you want to travel the world you need to embrace discomfort otherwise you're just gonna have a bad time and uh, yeah it's, it's part of the fun of it when you when you look back on these trips you're not gonna remember being hot you're gonna remember that kick-ass amphitheater we got back to the villa about five minutes ago I went into my room grabbed some water put on a swimsuit and I'm gonna go take a dip because um, well let's just say you're lucky you don't have smell of vision it has been a hot day um, <laughs> TMI it's just casually waiting for me <laughs> yeah, that's pretty tall. Oh, crud. Okay, yoga starts in 10 minutes, so I need to go change. It's just so tough. It's just so incredibly tough. Oh, look at the sky. After yoga, we had dinner at our villa, prepared by the amazing in-house chef. This was probably my favorite dish of the entire stay, pasta alla norma, a vegetarian dish with golden fried aubergine, tomato sauce, and basil. The next morning, we woke up early to do some outdoor yoga. You probably can't tell from these carefully curated clips, but my lord, I am so bad at yoga. I was an absolute mess, but I managed to have fun despite the intense embarrassment. We spent the day lounging around the villa, eating, reading, and even doing some walking meditation, something I'd never done before. The idea is to make tonight some uh, homemade pasta. The Phoenicians before 
then Greeks, Romans, Normans, Arabs, Spanish, French. All these people, Arab, Roman, Greek, they left many incredible things, monuments. Oh! <laughs> Our menu for the day started with cavatelli, small pasta shells served with fried courgettes and artichokes. The chef taught us how to clean and trim artichokes before starting on the pasta. You have there 250 grams of semolina flour and 125 grams of water. Not sure you got that. I just got complimented on my cooking by an Italian. <laughs> I was very, very proud of that compliment, but I may also have conveniently deleted the bit where I was told I was cleaning the artichokes completely wrong. So always remember what people post online isn't the full truth. Our second dish was involtini panati or breaded meat rolls, which you can see me making here. You create a filling of cheese, breadcrumbs, spring onions, and capers, and then wrap it inside thin slices of veal. It's absolutely delicious. It's a super cool drink. It's called a big This I'm being so classy and you're choking over here. Come on, sort it out. <laughs> Stop it. This yeah, is so good. It's so good. So good. It's so we love it. savory. I'm out of words. Just got back from dinner, which was fantastic, but also a bit sad because we are leaving tomorrow and I've really, really enjoyed this trip. I've enjoyed everyone I've met and uh, I have also enjoyed being here and not having to pack because that's what I'm going to do now. By the way, look at my nose. Oh. All of this needs to go in here, so we're going to make that happen now. When you're packing, always roll your clothes. It takes up way less space. And also, if you can, use packing cubes. And really, there's no reason why you couldn't. So just use them. They are amazing. These, I wanted to link below because they are compression packing cubes, which means they take up even less space than regular ones. And now it is our final morning. And as you can see, the weather has turned a bit. It's a bit damp, it was stormy all night. But maybe that's gonna make leaving a tiny bit easier. Sometimes meet people. Oh, you want? You're oh. oh no, you're not. Yeah. Um, I think because she says it's really good. Who is this? Alright, it's time to leave. I'll show you one final spin of the room. Boom. Thank you, room. Number 10. A quick thank you to CV Villas for hosting us on this trip. They have villas all over the world, including Greece, Italy, Morocco, Sri Lanka, and the Caribbean. Thank you for watching. I bring out new videos every Friday. See you then.